Hey there, welcome to episode 179 of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is uh, Wave 3 of Super 7's Conan Ultimates figures. Now these are some figures that I've been waiting for for quite some time. Um, pretty much as soon as Super 7 announced they had the license to make Conan figures, um, I wanted Conan in his like war paint look from the uh, the first live action movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, you know they've done a couple of Schwarzenegger Conans already as well as a comic book Conan. Uh, and now finally we're getting to war paint Conan. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, first, I'm going to start this video by saying, I, bought, I know I'm already sounding a little bit hoarse. Um, I, I have COVID. Um, I avoided it for over two years, but uh, I caught COVID. Um, you know, where I'm from in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, uh, mask mandates and everything are kind of done. So now when you go to the malls and stuff, half the people have masks on, half don't. You know, some of the retail clerks have them on, some don't. Um, but people are getting out, they're doing stuff, concerts are happening again, and so, you know, just life in general has kind of opened up some. Um, and yeah, so I don't know where I caught this, I was out quite a bit last weekend, we had some friends uh, staying with us, and we went out, we went and saw Morbius, uh, we went to out to dinner, um, I actually went and played poker with some friends the day before, so yeah, I've been out and about, I don't know where I caught it. But anyway, so I, I got COVID, and that kind of sucks. I have been sick. Um, I'm, I took a day or two off of work this week just so I could kind of like lay in bed and recover. Uh, it hasn't been that bad. Um, not much worse than any kind of standard cold or flu, uh, in, you know, at least in my case. You know, I am fully vaccinated, and I'm, I've got my booster. Um, however, I am one of the immune-compromised people. Um, you know, I take a drug called Humira to treat my colitis, which suppresses my immune system. Uh, so that I was always, there was always a little bit of fear with that. Um, like if I did catch it, how would my suppressed immune system handle it? And uh, yes, it seems to be handling it okay. I'm already feeling better than I was like three days ago or something. So relatively short run of COVID, but uh, yeah, it sucked. But anyway, this kind of helps cheer me up because right around the time I got sick, I had a big box show up from Big Bad Toy Store. It had all kinds of cool stuff in it, um, including these Conan Ultimates figures. So, yeah, the two figures I got were War Paint Conan. So this is the box that he comes in. So you can see it's this cool leathery type box. It's got this texture to it. And it's got the name Conan the Barbarian in this kind of metallic, like, I don't know if you'd say uh, embroidered or whatever. Um... I, I can't think of what word I'm looking for. Etched in there. Um, but yeah, so there's texture to the words there as well. And you can see how it picks up the light. It's pretty cool. On the back, um, again, you've got this kind of the sword, which I can't, I won't try and pronounce the sword of Aqualian or whatever the hell. Anyway, Conan's sword. So you got that on the back, again, with that reflective light. Very cool. And then you can slide the sleeve off. And this is the case with all uh, Super 7's Ultimates figures. They all come in this style packaging with the outer sleeve. There you see the Conan the Barbarian logo. And inside would be the figure. But I got these a couple of days ago. And I was dying to open them up and play with them. So I couldn't wait to show you guys. However, I did shoot some footage of the toys in the packaging. So I'll cut that in here as a split screen. So we got Conan. And then the other figure I got... There was only two figures in this wave. Uh, the Conan waves have been pretty weird. The first wave, um, which they don't even really call it wave one, but was the comic book Conan, so that came out by itself. And then there was movie Conan wave one, which was four figures. Then there was wave two, which was one figure. And then wave three, which is now two figures. So I've got all of wave three here, both figures. So here is Falsa Doom. So this guy was uh, Conan's villain in the first movie, as played by James Earl Jones, most famous probably for voicing Darth Vader. So this one here also is a textured box, but it's got kind of a snakeskin feel to it instead of the, uh, the leather look of the Conan box. So again, very cool. On the back, again, you have the kind of the weapon in there with the glossy reflective material. 
Um, but you see that's a snake headed dagger, which is Thulsa Doom's weapon. So very cool. And again, you slide that off to reveal what would be a figure inside. So I've already opened up the figures and I've been fiddling around with them for the last couple of days. So uh, why don't we get right into it? We're going to flip things around and take a closer look at the figures. So let's first take a look at Conan. So this here is a six inch figure. Uh, he's done in the same style as Masters of the Universe Classics. So just to give you a little bit of background, um, Mattel uh, had a line called Masters of the Universe Classics where they redid all their old He-Man figures in this new kind of six inch style figures. They did that for several years and then they eventually gave the license to Super 7. And Super 7 did a couple of years of Masters of the Universe Classics figures as well. And uh, the name Ultimates comes from uh, Super 7 wanted to re-release some of the main characters like He-Man and Skeletor that Mattel had previously produced. So to make them special and to justify people maybe buying these figures again, they wanted to give fans the ultimate versions of those characters. So they would give you a He-Man with like three or four different heads and three or four different swords and different hands and all kinds of stuff. Skeletor as well, different heads, different weapons. Um, so that style became known as Masters of the Universe Ultimates. And they, did, they just took that name and ran with it. So now they do Conan Ultimates and Ninja Turtle Ultimates and Voltron Ultimates. And they're all still kind of in that same style as the Masters of the Universe. So for example, if I bring in He-Man here, this is the filmation style He-Man from the Classics line, or the Ultimates line. And you can see these guys scale up pretty well together. You can see the similarities in the design. Uh, probably a lot of the same uh, pieces. Like I wouldn't be surprised if this is the same torso and the same upper arms and everything that they're still using. So a lot of carryover in those pieces. And they display pretty well together. Here's Conan with Super 7's uh, live-action Masters of the Universe He-Man. So, uh, you know, this is the uh, Dolph Lundgren version of the character. So these guys might look a little better together than with the animated He-Man. These guys look like they could be from the same world. And again, you see they scale up pretty well together. I don't know how much bigger uh, Dolph Lundgren is compared to Arnold Schwarzenegger in real life, if at all. But these guys still look pretty good together. The He-Man is slightly taller. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this figure. So I think the head sculpt looks really good. Like, is it the best Arnold Schwarzenegger? Probably not. But I think the uh, the war paint design kind of helps hide any, uh, you know, any inconsistencies or imperfections. So with that war paint there and everything, I think it really does a good job of capturing the look of Arnold Schwarzenegger's Conan. Uh, the hair, I think, looks great. You know, it's it's brown with just a simple black wash over it to bring out the details. The eyes look really good and really sharp. Um, the body, you know, we've seen this before. You know, I wouldn't, I can't say it's 100% the same body we had on He-Man and everybody, but it's the same style. So, one issue people might have with these Ultimates is that the articulation is a little old school because they still use that style from Classics, which has been around since 2009. So, not, not exactly a modern... And so the biggest thing with that would be, like, say, the elbows and knees are single-jointed. Most modern figures now tend to go with double-jointed elbows, so the arm could bend right back and touch his shoulder. But you see, that's all the movement you're getting out of the arms on this guy. The shoulders move like so. He's also got a swivel there, so you can move it a little bit like, like that. Um, movement at the wrists, so the wrist turns and goes up and down. And he's got this ab crunch. Again, sometimes that can be kind of awkward looking on bare-chested figures, but I think the war paint helps hide that a little bit here so you don't notice that joint so much right in the middle of his chest. Then he swivels at the waist. Joint there, so we can do the splits pretty good. Then he's got a uh, you know single-jointed knee, and he's an ankle back and forth and side to side a little bit. And I don't think there's any boot swivel. Nope, so no additional articulation in the leg but it's pretty much what you'd expect to see with uh, any other conan figures if you have the previous releases because there's a lot of uh, like reused parts with the other figures uh, you also see there he's got his little necklace which is a separate sculpted piece you could pop his head off and remove that if you uh, wanted to um, i guess i'll talk about the paint job here too so i already mentioned the war paint looks really nice helps hide some of the joints 
It looks pretty film accurate from what I can recall. Very kind of random. Uh, I love the paint, like the blood splotches there. Like they look genuine, like you just lopped somebody's head off and sprayed on them. So yeah, I really like that blood spray. I'm almost kind of surprised they did that. You would think that'd be the kind of thing maybe they would do on a variant version, like have a clean and bloody versions. But uh, yeah, if they were going to only give me one, I'd rather have the bloody variant. And I'm glad they didn't overdo it with like blood all over his face or anything. I think they've got just the right amount of blood splatter on him. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, so yeah, great figure. Uh, one thing you might notice, which I think is kind of inaccurate to the film, is uh, when he goes into war paint mode in the movie, he kind of powders up his whole body so he's very white. And then he has the black. And this is, this is a dark brown paint, I should mention. It's not black. Uh, I don't know what is screen accurate. I always thought he was kind of hit a white body with black war paint, but uh, I assume Super 7 did the research and maybe it was just a dark brown. Um, I don't really mind that he doesn't have the white. And to be honest, I think it might look better without it. So, you know, for film purists, they might be kind of pissed that they don't have that powdery white makeup on, but I'm actually fine with it. And... The only thing, I can put up a screenshot here to compare, but the only other figure I have to compare to is I have the Funko Pop version of Warpaint Conan, and you can see here how pale he is. So his skin is all this chalky white with the black Warpaint over top, and that's probably more accurate to what was on screen, but again, I, I think Conan might look a little strange, that pale and everything. I really like this figure the way he's painted as is. All right, so let's compare him to some other... Conan's So here we have the comic book Conan So you can see these guys they display pretty well together even if this guy's based on comic book art and this guy's based on a, Like an actual actor's likeness. I think you could still you know display them together play with them together. It's not too far-fetched and Then I don't have the first movie Conan which was him in his like pit fighter outfit. I have the second uh, Conan. So this is Conan uh, in what they call iconic pose. So this figure it had a different head with its uh, hair blown in the wind and you can hold the sword up over his head. There's a scene in the movie where he's practicing swinging his sword around on the beach. And so that's what they called iconic pose Conan. But I really didn't like the way that head sculpt looked with the hair constantly blowing in the wind. So thankfully they gave us this other head sculpt which I prefer. Um, this look here with the long hair and the crown was not a look we saw much in the movie. And I also think the paint on the head here doesn't really match the, like the tone on the body all that well. But it's still my preferred uh, head sculpt on this figure. And so this is how I've been displaying him. Um, I really like Conan. And I'm, you know, I'm happy to add different Conan figures to my collection. But I definitely think this new one is the best one yet. Uh, I'm really pleased with this figure. So there you go for the comparisons. For the used parts, like you can see that uh, the feet, the boots, the pants, uh, that's all the same. Um, so this loincloth piece is different. This guy did not have like loincloth. Uh, the arms might be the same. You know, this guy's probably pretty much the same from the neck down. Now you see the hands are different, but these guys all came with alternate hands that you could swap out. So I'll show you his other hands in a minute. Now, uh, one thing you'll notice, both these guys have the pinless joints, which is nice. Um, the early figures, like those He-Men I showed you, and this Conan here, which was the first one they put out, he has the pins in his elbows and his knees, so you can see that joint. So uh, Super 7 has got away from that now. Now they're hiding the joint, which looks really nice. So well, there you go. Now let's take a look at his accessories. So Conan comes with four extra hands. He came packaged with this kind of very flat open hand, but he also has closed punching hands for each side as well as gripping hands on each side so he can hold his sword. Um, he's got an alternate head, and this one also looks good. I think the likeness to Arnie is pretty spot on as well with that you know grunting yell of his. So that just pops on pretty easily so you could go with that one if you prefer uh, I'm hard-pressed to say which one I like better but 
I think I just generally prefer my action figures when they're on display to have kind of a more of a neutral look. So I think I'm going to stick with the more neutral expression. And then he has his sword. So here you go. Get all that nice detail just like we saw on the packaging. Slides out of its sheath there. He's got the bloody tip. And I even like that paintwork on the blood. The fact that it goes from kind of lighter blood to dark. I've never uh, killed anybody with a sword. But I imagine that might be a little more realistic than just one color red all over it. So I think that's a cool detail. I really like all that sculpting. And then he has a uh, scabbard or a sheath for his sword. Now the one problem I have with this sword is the same problem I've had with uh, the previous Conan figure I reviewed. And I think this sword is probably the same. It should be. That would make sense. So yeah, this one's got more painted detail. You can see the, uh, the hilt's a different color. It's got the blood. And then of course it's got some more painted detail here as well. It's two-toned as opposed to this one, which is just one color. But the sword is very big. Um, like, sure, Conan's a big guy and he needs a big sword, but I feel like this is a little too big. And I think that's especially obvious with the scabbard here. When you put this... Let's see. So he's got a little, little hole on his belt buckle here. And this here has a little peg. So you can plug that in, like so. And this thing, like, really... Like, it almost touches the... This is almost the length of his leg. And when you put the sword in there. Oops. That just seems really big and awkward. And uh, I tried to find some pictures online to see maybe that's film accurate. And it's a little hard to tell with the images I found. But... Uh, you know, I don't think it's ridiculously oversized necessarily, but I, it definitely seems bigger than it would have been on screen. So I felt that way with the previous Conan as well. So that would have been nice if maybe Super 7 had downsized his sword a little bit. So it looked a little bit more believable, but uh, not a big deal. Still a cool, still a cool sword. And here he is sword in hand. So pretty cool. Um, I'm really pleased with this figure. Um, you know, he retains some of the flaws of the previous figure in that, like, some of this sculpting seems a little soft, like, this, this loincloth piece looks a little, I don't know, rickety, like, it doesn't really look believable, it looks like a hairy diaper, maybe it's screen accurate, but it looks a little off to me. The articulation not being, you know, as good as it could be for other modern figures, like, Marvel Legends and Star Wars Black Series and stuff all have more articulation than these figures. And these figures are quite a bit more expensive, so you'd think you would be getting the most up-to-date articulation. Um, but, you know, all that aside, the biggest problem I had with the previous versions, I think, was the likeness wasn't quite there. And I think they've got it now. They've definitely got it to my satisfaction. I'm very pleased with this. Um, I think this is definitely a, a contender for my best of the year. I, I just love it. So, yeah, very happy to finally have this in my collection. So next up, we're going to take a look at Conan's uh, nemesis from the first film. Uh, this is Thulsa Doom. So looking pretty cool. Uh, in the movie, spoiler alert, Thulsa Doom and his goons show up at Conan's village and they murder Conan's family. And so, yeah, Conan's got a vendetta against this guy. Um, and, you know, he chases him down and they fight. So there you go. There's the plot of the movie, essentially. Um but yeah, Thulsa Doom is cool, played by James Earl Jones. Very, uh, He was very intimidating in that movie. Um, now, in the start of the movie, when he rides into town and kills everybody, he's wearing this black armor and this big helmet, and he looks very cool. And they made that version of Thulsa Doom in Wave 1 of Super 7's Conan Ultimates. And I wanted that figure. The only thing is, I was so disappointed with the Conan from that figure that I didn't want to buy the Conan and so I didn't want to buy Thulsa Doom without having a Conan I wanted to make sure that they were going to get the likeness right because I thought the likeness on that first Conan was pretty awful actually so I kind of wanted to wait and see if they were going to give us a better Conan and then by the time they announced the second Conan 
the the original Thulse of Doom was sold out. Um, these things are made to order, um, so I couldn't get the original Thulse of Doom. Honestly, I would have probably preferred to have Thulse of Doom in his armor. Uh, I think that would look a lot cooler displayed next to you know uh, War Paint Conan and everything. If I wanted to actually play with them and make them have a sword fight, that would make more sense. But this here is kind of uh, like a priest like Thulsa Doom. So yeah, in the later half of the movie, uh, when Conan has to sneak into Thulsa's sanctuary, hence the uh, the camouflage war paint, Thulsa has like this whole harem of women going, and he's dressed in his robes, and he's doing some sort of ceremony. And so this is what we got. This is like ceremonial Thulsa Doom. Now it's a nice figure. And I think they actually get the likeness better for this figure than the first one. But uh, that aside, I think I still would have preferred the first one. And maybe I'll track it down eventually on the secondary market. Um, one thing that's kind of odd about this figure is the skin tone. It seems a little light to me. Like, if I bring in Conan again and just compare the two. Like, when you see them side by side, I, you can tell he's darker. But, you know, like, he's a Caucasian guy. He's a black guy. I don't know if that really comes across. I think I think the skin tone's a little too light for Thulsa Doom. Now, James Earl Jones is relatively light-skinned, I suppose. Like, it's not, like, crazy far off. But it, it feels a little too light for me. But anyway, other than that, I think the likeness, like the sculpt and everything, looks really good. You know, it captures that young James Earl Jones face quite well, I think. And then the outfit. The outfit is kind of weird, because there's a lot of soft goods going on here, which I don't always love with my figures. Like, I don't mind a cloth cape here and there. But when you've got, like, a full-on, you know, cloth outfit, he starts veering into doll territory a little bit. So, uh, yeah. Let's take a look at it. He's got this kind of weird net cape. And so that's in like two different pieces that hangs over the back here. Then he's got this more silky like fabric and not silk. Like it's not, it feels plasticky. So it's not like a necessarily a nice material, but he's got that covering the whole skirt piece. And he's got this kind of like faux leather here in the straps, another faux leather for the belt, which is textures. So you can feel those, those snake like scales on there. And then the head, it looks like it would be like a leather, but this is just plastic. The whole head is you know, just sculpted plastic there. And then he's also got a separate necklace piece there. There might even be other layers here that I'm not seeing. But underneath, you can see he's got fully sculpted legs. And he's got a little belt here. You know, there's actually some detail in here beneath. Like the sculpt on his sandals and everything looks quite nice. Although, to be honest, that's probably the biggest reason why I would prefer the other version. Like, I like the armor and all that stuff, too. But I just, I don't like bare feet. You know, this guy, I can't, he doesn't look tough with his bare feet. He needs boots. Um, so, yeah, he's got that whole other, you know, lower body, which I think is all new. So, that's great that they sculpted new legs and new sandals and everything for him. But what's weird... As far as I can tell, his upper body here, I guess because they thought nobody was going to see it, it seems like they just used the armored body from the last figure. And the reason I can tell that is because of this. On both his arms, you can feel... Like, I can't really roll up the sleeves, but... its He's got this spiky bits. On the armored version, he had these kind of spiky gauntlets. So it made sense that there'd be these spikes on his outfit. But here, it really drives me crazy, and I think it's the worst thing about this figure. Is once you know that they're there, you just see it poking out of his sleeves. And you almost feel like you're going to tear the sleeve when you bend it, because this thing is just poking right at it. And I don't know why they wouldn't have just given him some bare Conan arms underneath of the outfit. It just, I don't know, maybe in the movie, he actually wore the armor underneath his cloak, and they were just trying to be accurate. But it just seems like they were maybe being lazy... And I don't know how they let this pass. Like, it's just, it's very, like, it just pops right out. That's the first thing I see when I look at it. It drives me crazy. And just to handle them, like, you can feel there's texture, there's sculpting on his on his arm, and it feels like there really shouldn't be. But, anyway. So that's my big complaint about this figure. 
But he, he like he's cool. Like he moves well. He's got the same articulation as the other guy. Um, the fact that he's got the skirt on doesn't hinder his movement very much. So you know, all good. Now, as far as accessories go, this guy's got a lot of them. So this guy has three pairs of additional hands, which is one more set than uh, Conan had. So lots of hands to choose from. Now, I don't like the flat hands that he's got here now. This is how he came in the package. I think they look good for if you've got him in some sort of like ceremony, like he's praying or raising the dead or something. But when they're just at his side, I think they look really awkward. Um, so I probably won't display him with those hands. I'll more likely give him his closed fists. Or then he's got two sets of gripping hands. So he's got hands like this on either side. And I'm not quite sure. They don't seem different enough to justify their existence. Like maybe this one's intended to hold his knife. And this one's intended to hold his bow and arrow. But like, come on. They seem like the same. So he's got the open hands, the fists, and then he's got two gripping hands, which seem virtually identical. So speaking of the weapons, so he's got his uh, snake dagger here. So it's two different snakes kind of coiled around each other. So you get some good double stabbing going on there. So that's cool. And he's also got a bow and arrow with a little got a bit of an elastic give there so you can maybe get him with two hands holding that open not sure I haven't tried it yet well so there's the bow and now for an arrow he actually has this really cool arrow which is a snake so you can shoot that snake from his arrow and uh, you know you can relive that moment you know I had I'm sure he does shoot somebody with this in the movie I actually can't recall but what it reminds me of is uh, when uh, Serpentor shoots a snake through Duke's heart in the G.I. Joe animated movie. But uh, there you go. I think Thulsa Doom did it first. Now he's got two alternate heads. So Thulsa Doom, uh, he like worships the snake god Set. And he's got this whole snake cult. Hence the, uh, the snake skin theme on his box. And you know the snake scales on his belt here and everything. So he's got kind of a snake thing going on. And there's a scene in the movie where you they cut from James Earl Jones' face like this into a snake. And it's like claymation where they just have his face morph into a into a snake. It's The effect doesn't really hold up so great in this day and age. But uh, anyway, so we do get a snake head for Thulsa Doom, which is kind of cool. And I was going to say, does the mouth open there? I don't, yep, yeah, there we go. So the mouth opens up. So that's pretty cool. So he looks like kind of like a boa constrictor, I think. Python, I don't know. I don't know my snakes all that well. But so that's cool. So you can pop that head on there. And, you know, that makes him kind of more of a, a neat character, a little bit more of a fantasy-like character. And you know what? I would be tempted to display him with this head, if not for those goddamn bare feet. I think that looks so weird to have a snake head with these human bare feet and human hands. The hands aren't as bad, but man, I wish he had boots on. So then I think that would that would just pull off that whole look a little bit better. And so anyway, in that same scene, so he, he turns into a snake. And he doesn't really walk around like this with the snake head. He basically turns into the snake. So there's a brief moment where he's got the snake head. And then his robes just fall to the ground. And a big snake slithers out of them. So this last accessory is of a snake crawling out of the hood so you can't really do anything with this like it's only partial snake you know it's not like a full pile of his robes you just get his hood laying there like that so i guess it's neat that they included it but you know i don't know uh really what you're going to do with it when i when i get around to displaying this guy in my cabinet i'm probably just going to leave that beside him like so so i guess it's kind of neat but it would have been cooler if they gave us a full snake or at least a full pile of robes so it looked a little bit more believable because all I've got is this little piece of material with this what looks like a giant snake coming out of it and it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense but anyway it's better than nothing it's sculpted and painted well and everything like that so I guess it's a neat accessory so anyway there you go that's uh, all I really have to say about Thulsa Doom he's a nice figure likeness seems pretty good the materials 
you know, it works pretty well together. He's very layered. But uh, I don't think this guy is going to make my best of list. But, uh, yeah, Conan, I definitely think will. So after I wrapped up my video, I was going to take some still images so I could use them for the thumbnail for this video. And I thought, well, you know what? I never changed out his head during the video, so maybe I'll get a picture of him with his snake head shooting his bow and arrow. And I've been struggling with it here for a few minutes, so I just wanted to share with you how annoying it kind of is. It's hard to get him to hold the arrow in any sort of credible way because um, his other hands here, the fingers, like there's not enough of a curl on his fingers to hold the string in place. So it just kind of keeps snapping back. Like maybe if you put his hand backwards, then see the string could catch. But, uh, you know, who holds it like that? So I really think they should have made a hand where his fingers would wrap around that string a little bit more carefully. And then the other thing, I tried to put the snake head on. But you see the peg hole is so far up in this long neck that I just could not get that to stick on. So you could get it to rest on there, okay. But as far as getting it to stay, like to snap in place, it's just not happening for me. So yeah, if you want to display them like that, sure, it'll rest there and it looks okay. But um, yeah, it's not great. So I don't think he's going to have either the snake head or the bow and arrow in the thumbnail. Okay, so that was my review of Super 7's Conan Wave 3 Ultimates figures. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, please leave me some comments below. Um, I'll be back soon with another video, and I will see you then. So, until then, ciao.